Welcome to Make Life Fun. I'm your host, Josie Wheatman, founder of Backroads Coaching, where we pave our own path to self-acceptance. Think of me as your self-love bestie, here to guide you, support you as you let go, rewrite the thoughts and beliefs that are blocking you from loving yourself and living your best life. This season, we are talking business, pleasure, love, money, and of course, all things motherhood. This is a sponsored episode by Regila Beauty. As women, our skincare needs are constantly evolving and changing. So it can get a little confusing when we need a new item to fit into our existing skincare routine to tackle new issues. Regila Beauty has a wide variety of items that are built to fit into your routine, whether you have youthful skin, mature skin, you're expecting, or you're even a new mama. If I told you that you could enjoy these benefits without the inconvenience or expense of changing your current skincare routine, but just by adding something wonderful and affordable to it. Skin that looks and feels more even-toned, firmer, hydrated, radiant, smoother, smaller pores. Well, Regila Beauty has the Hydrating Serum, and it is that something wonderful that I'm speaking of. It is perfect for busy moms at any stage of motherhood, whether you're trying to conceive, currently pregnant, nursing, or preparing for an empty nest. Our serum is the clean beauty, fuss-free add-in you've been looking for. It's formulated to be non-irritating for even the most sensitive skin. It's full of beautifying botanicals featuring hyaluronic acid, niacinamide, and vitamin C, the ultimate anti-aging trifecta. It sinks right into your skin effortlessly between your current toner, moisturizer, without feeling greasy or sticky. It's unscented and also free of toxic ingredients that could harm your health. Get it today by visiting Regila's Amazon shop at amazon.com slash Regila, R-E-J-A-L-L-A, or click the link in the description box now. Hello and welcome back to Make Life Fun. I am getting a little personal with you, this conversation. I'm sharing something that is very, very personal and close to my heart. This is a challenging journey that I'm still in this season. And I am sharing it with you to let you know that if you're going through this too, that you are not alone. I am so amazed by opening up about this, how many women have come forward saying that they've experienced something similar to this and to know that we're not alone and to allow yourself to be held, to be supported, to be loved during this time is the best advice that I have, but I dive in now and hope you enjoy it. And please don't forget to leave a review and let me know what your takeaway from this conversation. So I've wanted another baby since I was able to forget the first pregnancy (laughs) and delivery, which we as mothers, thank God we get that gift, right? That we forget the morning sickness. We forget all the having to go potty in the middle of the night, 50 times in one night. Like we forget all that. And so then we're able to try again. And so it was whenever it was about a year and a half that I was 100% ready to try again. And my partner was not quite there yet, but I was still planting seeds that I am ready of telling the universe. And I'm sure you've heard it here on the Make Life Fun podcast that Josie is ready for another kid. And so on my birthday, I actually found out that I was going to have a baby. (laughs) And that was a birthday present. It was a gift I wrote in my journal that day, welcome home to this sweet child that was wanting to be here. And sadly, I found out a few weeks later that I was about nine weeks pregnant when I found out the heartbeat was not beating and that I was miscarrying. And I remember thinking like, why? why is this gift being taken away from me? Like, how, how is it that I'm failing? How is it that my body is failing? Why? I just remember thinking, why is this being taken away from me? I just got to the point where I was on board because it takes a minute when you find out that you're pregnant to be like, okay, like, wow, this is really happening. And so at, at about nine weeks, I was like, okay, this is really happening. So start making doctor's appointments, start getting prenatals, start, start doing what you do when you become a mom. And so I was very devastated. I was very heartbroken. I was very much to not feel good. Like I just felt really sick. 
about the whole thing because this felt like a gift that was just taken away from me so quickly. And so I allowed myself to really sit with the pain. I allowed myself to really sit with the grief and I allow myself to ask for help and receive that help, which is another thing that is new for me through the healing journey of receiving the help. Because like I said earlier, for me, a lot of it is I can do this. I am strong enough. I can, I don't need help. I can do all of it on my own. I'm strong enough to do it, but really receiving help from the people that were able to help me, such as my coach, such as my spiritual healer. So allowing myself to, to reach out and allowing myself to give myself permission to cry and be sad because it, it is sad when you're blessed with a life and for it to be taken. And even at nine weeks, it is sad. And so now that I've been able to process the whole thing that has happened, I have named this baby that I never got to meet blessing because I believe that this baby came here to teach me something, something big that I needed to learn, that I was ready to learn. And it taught me to be more loving. I've been able to hold this feeling of grief and sadness and this feeling of unconditional love and this feeling of gratitude at the same time, which I never thought was possible. I thought you're either sad and broken underneath the covers or you're happy top of the world feeling, but I've been able to hold both. And that has been so profound for me. And it is what they say, like it's two sides of the same coin, joy and sadness. Because when we feel the amount of sadness, it's not until then that we are able to feel that amount of joy. It's like, I'm a happy person. 99% of the time I'm it's just in my nature. It's just who I am. And so I go through life as this happy person. It is my autopilot. It's my version of autopilot. And so by going through something this hard, this heartbreaking made my level of joy even bigger, my level of gratitude, my level of love, which blows me away, blows me away. Like I look at my son now and I've, I mean, I adore Everett, and I, but there's a level of love that's even deeper now for the fact that he's alive, for the fact that he made it for life itself. You don't really think about those things when you have a child who's running around who's healthy, but when you lose something like this, you start to realize how precious life is. You start to realize what a gift. It's a reminder to go back and ask yourself, what is most important? And what am I doing? And does it really even matter? And again, to really slow down. I give myself, I gave myself permission to be slow, like a turtle. Like I just was allowing myself to feel my feelings, allowing myself to sit, allow myself to not have a regular, no schedule. Like what needed to be done would get done when it got done. And I just gave myself so much compassion and so much grace during this time. But my medicine has been my son. My medicine has been seeing him and realizing what a gift he truly is. Like, I know what a gift he is, but now I know deep in my soul, in my heart, what a gift he is. And for anybody that's going through this, I just want them to know that you're not alone. You're not broken. You're not a failure. You're not. And there's a part of me that feels like when I was going through that motions, like I was giving birth to death. And I sat with that and I meditated on that. And it just made me aware of how powerful we women are. Not only can we give birth to life, but we can give birth to death. And it is not an easy thing to give birth to death. And it's not an easy thing to give birth to life. And so as I'm going through this, I feel like I'm going through a second, a third rebirth. I mean, all the times I've gone to rock bottom to come back up, I feel like is always a rebirth for me. And so to know that you're not alone, to know that as you're moving through it, to ask for help, to know, to look for things that can uplift you. Like if you have a child running around to really, really sit and be present with them and look in their eyes and connect, connect with that. Those are the things that are going to help you get through it. But honestly, it's just a hard, it's a hard thing. The thought of if I didn't have Everett and I was going through this process, I would have just had to reach out to more people that I love, like surrounding myself with people that I love as much as I love my son, like surrounding myself with people that truly nurture my heart and my soul. So for me, it would have been being around my mother. Like that is what I would have needed. That is the equivalent, like my love, that's the equivalent to my son. And so being around my husband, being around my mom, being around my family, being around other children, like my nieces and nephews, I would have just surrounding myself with that love and light. 
because I think that's what we need when we're in the dark. We need light and children and the people that we love and care about. Like we, we don't think about that often of like we need that, but we truly need people that are in such resonance with love, with joy, with passion. And kids, kids are such catalysts for that. And I think that's why they are so helpful in bringing you out of the darkness. And so if I didn't have ever, that's what I would have done. I would have had to look for, for that light elsewhere. The thought of thinking that there are people out in the world that do not have light that do not have somebody to reach out to, to help them through the darkest times of their life. I mean, that's when you have to reach out to professionals. That's when you have to reach out to get help from a therapist. That's when you have to, I don't, if you go to church, reach out to your church. I mean, you have to find help. You have to know that you're not alone because you can't go through these dark nights of the soul. You can't, you can't do it alone. Because if you do it alone, the fear is you're going to be in that dark place for a whole lot longer. You're going to be in that dark place for a lot longer. So looking for light and inner light too. If you are on the spiritual healing path, there is a level of energy. There's a level of light. I believe that we store up as each time we heal, each time we do the work that we can tap into. Cause that's what I was able to tap into. Cause I was sitting in meditation every day and asking the questions that were on my heart. And there is a light there, even in my darkest time, there is a light inside of me that I can turn to. And so allowing yourself to turn into that light inside of you too. And remembering that it's there and that you can tap into it and ask questions, I think could be very helpful. But if you're going through this, this is hard, it's heartbreaking, it's devastating. It's, it's not for the faint of heart. And us women, we are strong. We are powerful. We have the power to give birth to life and death. Like ponder that. Like, wow, it's amazing. It's amazing. I've always known that I am strong. I've always said I'm the strongest person I know. And to be able to go through this, I would not, I would have broken down. Before I did my healing work, I would have broken down to the point of no return. There would have been a Josie that was under the covers and not able to look left or right, not able to see the light because it was so hard. But because I've done the inner work of healing, because I trust the universe is on my side, because I trust my journey of life, and because I know that each lesson there is there is a little level, even if we can't see it yet, like there is going to be that light, like knowing that and having that faith in something higher and bigger than me, like that was my, that was what kept me going. But if I didn't have that, I don't know what would have happened truly. Yeah. So the surprising thing I've learned about myself is that the work is working, the hours and the money and the time and the tears that I've put into this healing journey. In this moment of going through this, it shows me that I'm really evolving, that I'm really working because it's so hard sometimes to look at the beginning and be like, see all the progress you've made. So when something really hard happens, then you realize, oh my gosh, I have all these tools and I'm using these tools and I'm able to bounce back quicker, even from something that is so, so traumatizing, so devastating. And so that is what I learned is that it gave me knowing that I'm on the right path. It gave me knowing that, that I'm learning what I came here to learn in life and that I'm taking these lessons and I'm doing something with them. It just, I've always known that self-love and self-acceptance was the ticket because I have the opposite. There was no self-acceptance. There was no self-worth. There was no self-love. There was self-loathing. There was hatred to every level there could be, to my skin color, to my nose, to my hair. There was just so much dislike, strong dislike, that I knew that the opposite, there had to be a version of the opposite. So that's why this Make Life Fun podcast is all about the self-love and all about the self-acceptance, because it wasn't until I started finding that self-love and self-acceptance did my world start to change? Did I start to command what I really truly wanted in my life and the people that I really related to, the people that truly loved me for me? I started being myself, being more authentic. And so I, I believe that this 
thing that we go through that is life that is so hard that is so heartbreaking at times that is so full of joy at other times is all part of the journey and if we can take a step back and enjoy the journey and feel it all wherever we are like if we are in the misery like feel the misery if we are in the joy feel the joy and allow yourself to feel it fully allow yourself to really really allow yourself to feel the pain allow yourself to feel the joy because we don't do that like when we feel pleasure we feel it for a split second we're like oh great on to the next when we feel pain we feel pain for a split second how can i get out of it how quick can i get out of it how quick can i just push it to the side and pretend like it didn't happen but if we can like really be with what is that is life that is living and it's not always going to be easy but it can be when you use the tools that you have like you have a whole box of tools from life life has taught you these tools that you have use them when you need them the most because i think when we are at the bottom when we are feeling the most broken that is when we want to throw away everything that is when we want to just pretend like we don't have these tools but remembering that you have the tools is the first thing and saying that i'm willing to use them i'm willing to use these tools as my medicine is we, we must do that. And as a mom, before going through a miscarriage, I was just an advocate for just be a happy, positive, joyful mom. But I think there's something to feeling the pain and allowing your child to see that. They have to know that life is full of all of it. There is the good, there is the bad, and we have to be able to feel it all. Like that's, that's life. And it's our responsibility to heal. It's our responsibility to evolve and keep moving through. But I think it's also our responsibility to show our children that it's not always going to be roses. It's not always going to be fun. There's going to be hard days. There's going to be hard times. And that's part of being human. And even if we don't say it, just us living it will show that to them. That's my new perspective is that we get to feel it all. We get to enjoy it all. It's part of life, the good, the bad. We can't have the good without the bad. And so with motherhood, it's the same. We can't have the good without the bad. I'm still an advocate for that self-acceptance and that self-love. Like whatever you have to do, whether it is get help, whether it is read that book or watch the YouTube videos, there's so much resources out there when it comes to learning how to love yourself, learning how to be kind to yourself. And there's so many tools there's so many, it's kind of overwhelming how many tools there are. But there is something out there that works for you. There is, there is, and you just got to look for it. For me, having help with my son Everett while I was going through my miscarriage was, I mean, it was necessary. There would have been no way around that. I, no matter how superwoman I would have wanted to be, no matter how much of a Wonder Woman I would have wanted to be, I needed help. And so getting somebody who can come and help you with your child, who can come help you with the cooking and the cleaning while you're going through this, like do yourself a favor and get support. And when people ask you, what do you need? Don't be afraid to say, I need help with my children. I need help with the laundry. Don't be afraid to say that because you're doing something really hard. It's really hard. It's hard emotionally. It's hard physically. So receive the help. And as women, it's so hard for us to receive help because we've, we've been conditioned to think we can do it all. And being super mom is the number one trophy, the token that we want. But I'm here to tell you that's not true. That's a false belief. And we have to allow ourselves to receive help. If I didn't have help with Everett and all the things around the house, I wouldn't be where I am today. Like it would have taken a lot longer, I would have had to push it to the side because I wouldn't have been able to deal with it. But giving yourself that space to slow way down, to be able to feel your feelings, to be able to feel your emotions is necessary. And you can't do it all. I know we love to multitask, but we can't multitask with our feelings. We can't multitask with healing. We need to allow ourselves to feel it because if you don't feel it now, you're going to feel it later. So a lot of times we think if we push things to the side, they're never going to come up again. That's where you're wrong. The time when it decides to come up is going to be doing like a beating. It's going to be doing a conversation at the grocery store. It's going to come up at a time where you don't want it to. And so taking the space to do it when you're in it, it's going to save you so much grief later on. So the tools that have helped me the most 
through this difficult time has been definitely stillness. That's the biggest one is allowing myself to be present with what I'm feeling, allow me to be present in my body. And it's not always comfortable, but allowing that to be a practice for me has been huge. Another thing is physical, like giving myself like, like hugs, like physical touch, like giving myself compassionate hugs, like putting my hand on my heart for me is huge. Like just feeling that I'm alive, that I'm breathing, gratitude, practicing of gratitude of all the things that I'm grateful for and journaling, just brain dumping everything that I'm feeling, just putting it all on paper. And I don't know if I'll ever read them again, but they're there all my emotions, all the pain that I was feeling and tapping. So going through and voicing the emotions that you're feeling. So emotional freedom technique is a a healing modality that you can use to tap on the different pressure points that allow you to say what you're feeling and also reframe it to a better feeling thought. So doing that was really, really helpful for me and getting Reiki. So that's another modality. It's a healing modality. And that allows you to have a practitioner do the healing work on you. That was very helpful for me to move some of that energy that was in my body and talking to my coach, allowing myself being around people that can hold all my emotions because there's people that you are around that can't hold it. They are just as fragile as you are and they feel it such a deeply that it's hard to fully allow yourself to let it out. So being around someone like my coach or a therapist that can really allow you to truly break down if you need to, if you need to let the tears come out, somebody who can truly hold that for you, because not everybody is able to hold all your emotions. And so Those were some of the tools that I used that were very helpful and listening to podcasts on the days that I needed to just numb out because there are moments where you need to numb out. Like it's full on. It's all day, every day, full on. And so for me, it was being able to let my mind go. So listening to podcasts, watching Christmas movies for me was very helpful of the moments where I needed to like numb out and not feel anything. And so find the tools that work for you, but there are a lot. So with a couple going through this, I witnessed both people go through it in their own way. For men, they're very much doing, they want to do things. They, so they will go through and do all the things they need to do. They have their to-do list. They're just going through life, just normal. Whereas for most women, not all, we feel everything very deeply. And so it's very different going through it as a male and a female. And at first, what I did, most of my grieving away from my partner, I didn't want to burden him with my grieving at first. At first, I just thought, I'm just going to do this in the bathroom. But then I realized that we're both going through this. Like, it's not just the me thing. And so allowing myself to be vulnerable enough to say what I'm feeling, to ask for sensitivity, for voicing it, giving it words so that he was able to understand it was very, very helpful in moving through this because we're different. So for me, it's tears. For me, it's crying. For me, it's emotional. And for him, it's not. And that's okay. And I had to realize that it was going to be different and that he can hold my emotions and I can hold his emotions. And past me would have not had that awareness that we're going to grieve differently. I would have wanted it to be like, let's both be sad together. But I realized that we all have to go through what we have to go through in our own way, in our own time. And so that is what needs to happen. You need to give your partner the grace to do it on his own and give yourself the grace to do it too on your own and then you can come together and talk and feel it together but at the end of the day we're all going through our own stories in our heads and our own our own drama and so it's still a work in progress it's definitely it it takes time it takes time but knowing that the love is there and As women, we're the one who are living it, breathing it. It's happening in our body. So we feel it in such a, such a bigger, bigger way that we have to almost spill it out for our partners. And I know that it's not easy when you're going through it, but if you're able to let them know how you're feeling, it will definitely help. 
Yeah. So for me, it's always been about shattering the box. Like we, we need to bloom. It's a must. We are in this box that we call our life and we are going through it on autopilot. And we don't know that we're on autopilot because we've been doing it for so long. This is just our life. This is what we do every day. This is what we say. This is how we act. This is who we are. But when we take a step back and realize that there is a different way of being, like there's a way of being that feels more joyful, that feels more in alignment, that feels more carefree, like you have freedom inside where you're not as triggered all the time, where your trauma isn't always showing up because it just shows up when you're unhealed, when you're not willing to look at it, it just shows up when you don't want it to show up. And so we have to shatter the box. So that means that we have to feel our feelings and we have to go through the emotions that are trapped and release those emotions in order to bloom. And so the work that I do is trauma work. It's embodiment work and embodiment work is working with the body. Like, where are you feeling those feelings? How can we release them? So I help you release what is trapped, what is no longer serving you. So that way you heal and you move forward and giving you tools that you can use to continue to do the work for yourself. And so that is the work that I'm going to always do because it's the work that has been catalyst in my life, embodiment work, mindset work, and let's do this work together of healing because it's never complete. It's a day by day choice to unfold and become the version of yourself that you've always wanted to be, even if you didn't know they were there, but you know, but it's for people who are ready. Like there is no, there's no dragging people. There's no fixing people. You're not broken. The person who is going to work with me is aware that there's a better way is aware that they are triggered and they're ready to release the triggers and they're ready to release the trapped emotions that are no longer serving them. And they're ready to be more free in the world, less trapped and more in control of their life because they're in control of their inner life. They're ready to love themselves into life and accept themselves for who they are right now as they move into the next version of themselves. And so if you're ready to love yourself into life, like I'm your girl, I have done the heavy lifting. I know what it's like to be at the rock bottom. I know what it's like to not feel good in your own skin, to not like yourself, to not love yourself. Now I know what it's like to love myself unconditionally, to put myself first, to be the light in the world, even in my darkness, and to be able to hold the dark and the light at the same time, which I didn't think was possible. There's just so much here when you're ready to do the healing work. And it's not for the faint of heart. I know there's people out there advertising this is easy, this is fun. Let's go. Let's make that money. But you got to do the work in order to make the money. You have to do the work in order to feel healed. You have to do the work in order to set boundaries, in order to love yourself. It's all work, but it's the best work that you've ever done in your life. I mean, every day you're working to keep those feelings trapped, to keep those feelings pushed down. Like that's harder work, honestly. Like the work of being so triggered that it ruins your whole day. That is the worst. It's actually easier to feel your feelings, let them go and be moving in the world in freedom than it is to be moving in the world like a person every time you your wound gets touched, you blow up because you don't know any other way to be. And so, yeah, that's the work that I, that's my mission. That's my life's purpose. That's my work. It's been a pleasure. It's crazy to have these conversations at the end of the year, because at the beginning of the year, we go into it full throttle and we have these goals and these dreams that we're reaching for. But what I've found is when we so focus on a goal that we miss our life. And so if you, for the year before we move into 2023, like pick a word, pick a phrase that you're going to go into the year to try to embody, to work towards. And now I'm not saying don't have goals because we all need them, but don't be so hard focused on that one thing that you miss your whole life. Life is here to be felt, to be lived, to be enjoyed, the good, the bad, feel it all. And it's not always going to be pleasant, but get help and get support and surround yourselves with those that love you, especially during this holiday time, because it's the holidays are hard for some, and it's not easy for us all to be around the people that triggered us the most and giving them that grace and compassion, but first give it to yourself, that grace and compassion and set those boundaries. And when you're ready for help, I'm here. Thank you for being part of the self-love movement. Your support and care matters here. 
please be sure to subscribe, review, and share. And get your ultimate daily planner freebie today by visiting makewifefunpodcast.com. When you're ready to step deeper into my vibration and work together, go to backrosecoaching.com. Thank you again for listening. See you next time.